H. Herbert's Hundred Harem. I apologize for the late chapter. I struggled to focus. Oh, this is going to end well, Herbert notes in a tone drenched in so much sarcasm that it rings through even his high-pitched and innocent-sounding voice. He and the other commanders of this joint endeavor have relocated to an observing ship with extremely powerful sensors. It watches the whole of Centris along with another three such vessels, each one observing an enormous area and overlapping, all ready for the big show. Your concerns are already well recorded. However, the warning has gone up and we can not only not back out now, but if we don't do this soon, there will be too much of a chance for them to hide. Investigator Snow says and he sighs. I know, it's just fracking an entire planet on the axiom angle is a hell of a thing. A potential threat like this is not one to take lightly, Jalassi states. I fully understand that. I also understand that this is basically kicking over every animal nest there is. I've called everyone back into the Dauntless and put everyone on high alert. No way we don't shake out some kind of madness in this. We're also using our infiltrators to warn the friendlier conspiracies. About that, long story short, we have several categorizations for the conspiracies we find. Most are just social clubs or political activists that have a secret handshake or passcode. Nothing to be concerned about, so we note it down and move on. Some, however, make a point of recording others. We make sure we have people in those when we can, because it's too useful not to. Then we also run into the benevolent ones, and we try to support them however we can. Neighborhood watches and the such often find donations of high-end and very robust communicators that make their jobs easier. And other types? Criminal organizations we sabotage, subvert, or reveal to the local police. The really dangerous stuff, well, this here is a fine case of it. We take it very seriously, and if what we find is dangerous enough, we get more people to help, Herbert says simply. And sabotage entails? Turning them against other nearby criminals, having their weapons fail, misplacing shipments, and the like. Subversion has us pull the people that were forced or fell into crime, but one out out often recruiting them, but nearly half decide to simply go into witness protection. Most leave centrists peacefully with their families and friends. Of course, revealing them to the police is obvious, but on the more exciting cases, we also volunteer backup to keep things peaceful, Herbert states. Peaceful as in, as in having armed backup clearly wearing power armor and with a gunship nearby tends to dissuade criminals from being violent to begin with. Herbert says, and Mia snorts in amusement. Well, whatever is happening, we're a minute at most out from the disruptions being set off across all of Centris. Even if there isn't immediate retaliation from the innumerable criminal elements, this is going to send the suspicious-minded into an absolute frenzy, Mia says. No doubt, Herbert agrees before his communicator goes off. He checks it and then checks it again. Of course, it's all going to happen at once, isn't it? What's happening? The inevitable is roughly 24 hours away from the edge of cruel space. The second wave is coming. Out of cruel space and into a wider galaxy, you mean? Sure, humanity's territory may be enormous for a single species to fill up, but the galaxy beyond it is much larger. True, Herbert says as he mentally goes over things. Yes, he's been preparing for this, as has everyone else, but it's still a little nerve-wracking. It begins, Jalassi says, and Herbert looks out the window to see Centris shift. The disruption waves cause the lights on Centris to blink in expanding waves, like waves of darkness that are resisted and swept aside in moments. It lasts for only a few seconds, but the readouts on the side monitors lets Herbert know they found a lot. Literally billions of different areas where the axiom was twisted just so in order to hide things. We have our target. Time to start investigating. Embrace for the retaliation, Herbert says as he receives his first message that notes that an observed area has started showing weapons. It's just the first past the line, though. More are coming, and more still. There's about to be more hot zones than undaunted, even with our recruiting. Before anyone can say more, Herbert receives a priority notice. He nods. Ladies, I'm afraid I have to depart from your company for a short while. There are several zones far too close to the Dauntless, and other priority room team shuwarm. What are the undaunted assets? Your pardon, he says before activating a recall. 
There is a panicked flurry as they smash hard drives and destroy data chits to try and cover their tracks. No one had fully believed that the authorities would actually send out disruption waves on such an enormous scale. There were so many gravia on Centris that attempting it would count as genocide. Then they came out at a frequency that barely ruffled the gravia and still exposed them like the door implodes inwards. A tiny figure in a dark outfit somewhere between blue and black rushes in. There is no visible skin. There are, however, clearly defined muscles on their figure and numerous weapons and devices strapped to them. She raises a rifle and finds herself suddenly flying backwards as things go numb, and as she hits the wall, the remains of her weapon are wrapped around her wrists like cuffs and sending out disruptive pulses into her to stop her from using Axiom. The remains of the hard drives and data chits, as well as the still undamaged hard drives and chits, are all swept up into a pouch, and the remaining members of the shadow surveyors are disarmed tied up and left on their knees before the figure vanishes. A small drone then floats into the room, followed by a large one with numerous weapons that point at each of them. The smaller drone slowly floats around, scanning everything, scanning all their faces and doing nothing else. What the hell just happened? One of her sisters in arms asks in a stunned tone. There's suddenly another among them and they're slammed into the walls. Before any of them can hit the ground, the metal is shifted and they're trapped to the spot before a flicker of pain causes their axiom to scramble. They can only watch in mute horror as a tiny figure in a dark armored suit flits through the area bringing together all their documents, munitions, and equipment, and then shoving it all into a single small pouch before scanning the area. To her horror, he pauses at the wall and taps on it. There is an audible hollow sound, and he taps to the area's side to hear the wall be solid right next to it. He then taps along a lined NOD, quickly figures out the dimensions of the small hollow. A bit of banging, and he finds how to open it and is exposed to the keypad. He presses a few buttons, and there's a denial. Three times more, and he gets nothing. Then on his fifth attempt, it gives a chime, and the floor next to him sinks down, and then withdraws to the side to reveal the passage beyond. He walks up to it and pulls out a small device off his belt activates it, and then tosses it into the hole before nodding. He then taps the side of his dark gray visor and then nods before tilting forward at the edge of the pit and falling through. It took 20 seconds. Back in orbit, the team is shocked when not even 10 minutes later, and a tiny figure in dark blue to black bodysuit walks in. He's heavily armed, there are several small rips and stains on his outfit, and it's clear he's been through it. He then pulls out a full-size coat from a pouch much too small to fit it, and he sweeps it around himself to slip it on as Herbert in a private stream uniform. Sorry about that. We found a lot of spots far too close to the Dauntless to leave them alone, and it was an all-hands-on-deck situation. But the immediate problem is currently handled, he says as he buttons up his coat and then pulls out his hat and puts it on. He looks like he's never so much as seen combat let alone just came from it. What happened? Yalasi asked. As you know, all embassies on Centris have a 500-meter radius where all activities surrounding them are legally the business of the embassy. There were no less than six different groups hiding in Axiom Eddies maintained around expanded spaces. I personally hit two of them, and the second one had a much, much larger area than initially perceived and took me a bit more. You were gone 10 minutes and hit two hostile targets in the middle of actively defending themselves. Well, they didn't have much in the way of actual resistance. The other ones are more entertaining, Herbert replies. In what way? The woman is abjectly larger, stronger, and has been trained far longer than either man. But between Omega locking her into position with Alpha as they both casually go over the documents the organization has gathered, in the end, it's determined to be unimportant, so even through her power armor, the woman is knocked out and left for sorting. The two men look over the small battalion of armored women who had been hiding out 350 meters away from the Dauntless. Their reports weren't suggesting hostility, but when you find someone hiding in your backyard, you don't ignore it. In a very fast-paced kind of way, we have more than just spies and soldiers after all, Herbert notes. Modan catches the tritite coins in a single motion. The flight of unconscious Metak were scattered around the room, and he casually walks over to a nearby computer. 
He starts breaking down all the possibilities and slaps the keyboard before pressing confirm. It accepts the password and he starts whistling as he downloads a copy of all their files into a burner drive. The odds shift and probability moves around before he gives it a nudge. The woman who had fake going down rises up behind him, then trips on one of her fellows and lands hard on her head. Out cold. He glances back and grins. When the world bends to your favor, your enemies are already defeated. Needless to say, we're just reacting the same way the rest of the planet is when they suddenly realize that they have not only more neighbors than expected, but more unpleasant neighbors than expected. Herbert says, before he pulls out his communicator and sees it lighting up with numerous areas being hit all over the place. Many are reports of different events happening on all the spires and plates. He then pockets it and turns off the vibrate as he pulls out his secondary and much more specific communicator. It only has one command, be ready. All of us are going to be here for a while as the people on the ground sort out what's what. I have some training in mixing drinks. Does anyone want a drink? I want a drink, Herbert offers. More to kill time and make some friends than anything else. Doesn't human alcohol impede development at your physical stage? Jalassi asks. That's why I'm having a non-alcoholic drink called a Shirley Temple. It's high in sugar and has caffeine, but is fairly safe for your races. Who else wants one? Herbert asks as he heads to a desk and stars pulling out bottles of ingredients and a pitcher he starts filling with the contents of the bottles. A bit of mixing, and he nods before pulling out some glasses. You have, you have the ingredients to mix drinks and serve them, just casually on you? Yes, Herbert agrees as he pours out some of the drink in each glass and invites them to each have some with a wave of his hand. Why? The techniques that calm people down and get them talking generally work to also kill time in legal manners. Get them talking. Is this an interrogation technique? Interrogation isn't usually tying someone down and hitting them until they talk. Proper interrogation is getting them calm, comfortable, and get them to lower their guard and trust you. Or in other words, be calm, be kind, and be accommodating. Reach understanding. You wear many faces, Mr. Jameson. Jalassi says and he nods. I have to. If the universe were so simple as to require only one, then that's all I'd have. But it's not, so I wear as many as I need, he says simply.